Well, welcome everyone. This is our 10th community call, which is very exciting. It's our last community call of the year. Um, we're going to be talking about what can be made from waste. So hopefully, hopefully you've brought some ideas to share. I've got a couple of things to share as well. Um, just wanted to say thank you to those of you that um, have supported us with a coffee as well when you booked into the event. We really appreciate your contribution. Um, and it's just so nice to see so many people um, come together and interested in zero waste. So um, thanks very much for attending. Um, tonight, our aim is to have fun, have a fun and inspiring open conversation to share and come up with creative ideas to make zero waste gifts for friends, family and loved ones. And hopefully we can share some of these um, gifts with our community um, through our social media afterwards. Um, so yeah, tonight, hoping to kind of build a supportive community to share ideas and inspire one another. So just continue with kind of the building of this community around zero waste design, um, discuss techniques for making zero waste gifts. So if anyone actually has techniques that they'd like to share, that would be great as well. Um, a kind of show and tell of zero waste gifts as well. So we'd love to see what you've made um, and then wrap up the year of successful community calls. So um, I am gonna just stop sharing my screen now and um, invite anyone who would like to share a project. Liz, have you been working on anything at all? For Christmas, actually, I have. I uh, I have a, a a suitable project on my blog this week, which is a drink bottle holder that's really quick to make. That uh, I made with my children um, uh, a few years ago, and then I've just put it up as a project because it's really quick to make for presents. Um, so here's one I made from a bean's leg. Took me about five minutes. Uh, and I'll put the uh, I'll put the link in the comments. Yeah, great. Uh, this was this was skinny jeans, and I just cut the leg off, and then that's the the hem of the jeans. And then I just did the thing at the end. The little triangle just, kind of folds at each side. Uh, it's just got a square cut out at each side. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Great. Thanks for sharing. Yeah. Sorry, that was a bit quick. No, it's okay. Oh, I, have, I have another one. I have another one, but it's not yes, quite finished. Sure. Funny in this, I feel ridiculous in this costume, <laughs> but it was a good idea at the right. time. <laughs> um, uh, I have a new pattern coming out next week, at the end of next week. I've been making zero waste toys. Oh, wow. Yeah. So they're yeah. wearing, uh, um, uh, the clothes are like little zero waste, uh, pinched a lot from zero waste sewing, actually. Okay, um, great. But yeah, the, probably the most fun zero waste pattern I've ever done, and uh, and highly highly recommend trying a um, making a zero waste toy as a um, uh, just a thing to do. Um, it's sort of like a low outlay and um, and yeah, a lot of fun. I actually saw you posted on your Instagram as well. And I, I did see a shape that looked like an arm or something. And I was like, what is that? I couldn't quite figure it out because you put it up for everyone to guess. And I, I couldn't figure it out, but I did see the arm. So I was like, oh, right. <laughs> yeah, I didn't put the scale on. So uh, so it could have been anything. Some people thought it was something for adults. That's great. So that's, that's the pattern that's coming out next week. Yeah. Oh, great. Oh, see if I have time to make one before Christmas. <laughs> Does anyone else like to share? I've got quite a few things to share, but it'd be nice to see what the community has first. Hello. Hi, Gaspar. Hi. Uh, I've been working like on my uh, school project. And I was quite inspired by the zero waste I learned in this community. Like we were, uh, the project was about creating a new body with foam. It's not actually like, the, do you know foam, like muse? Like uh, it's like this spongy material. Yeah. And I decided it was not a very sustainable material 
but the university asked us to play to create a new body with that. And if you see here in my sketchbook, um, try to cut the pieces in very zero waste uh, ways because it was a very cubical shape what I was creating. And yeah, fun and interested to share with you. And also to thanks for uh, open my mind when I start uh, attending to this zero waste uh, conversations. Oh, thanks. Uh, <laughs> it's so nice to know that people are benefiting from you know the community here as well. So thank you. So you cut, you made the zero waste pattern, and then you cut it out the foam out of the zero okay. waste. Oh, so interesting. I've not seen that done before. Yeah, come was this one. Like this was my new body um, proposition, pro proposition, but yeah, oh. I cut it all with like zero waste and uh, trying to waste as less as possible. Yeah, um, I can see those being very cute as little tree decorations. <laughs> <laughs> Great, thank you for sharing. Welcome. Milan, have you been making anything this year? I know you made those little, the blowfish bags last year. Have you had any chance to make anything yet? No, like every year I say, oh yeah, I'm gonna prepare my Christmas gift at least two months before. And then I'm stuck at the end of the year with a lot of accounting and administrative things to do. And I am just late in making my Christmas gift, so. Yeah, not yet. But last year, indeed, um, I just went on like Pinterest, as many people, and I um, decided to make a tiny uh, kid bags out of uh, scraps with um, with the shape of a fish, and it was really cute. I really enjoyed making them, uh, especially because I never saw uh, kids wear, so it was kind of the first time. I did it and it was very pleasant, like very relaxing, yeah. not to um, not to think about designing patterns or releasing any, you know, uh, open source pattern or anything. It was just for myself and my family. So it was, uh, yeah, great to do it. Hopefully did you just did you, did you design the bag yourself or was it a pattern you found online? No, well, I I took the inspiration from Pinterest, but then I made my own pattern, like, and for the I'm also like a, I use a lot of uh, digital software usually to do my patterns, but this time I wanted to make it out of paper, so it was like coming back to my uh, initial skills, so it was great as well. Yeah. Did you take any pictures of it before you gave it away? Um, I still have one piece that I kept for myself, <laughs> just as a record. I could bring it up, actually. I can take it, um, uh, yeah. You should find it if you can, it's so cute. Yeah, I'll, co I'll come back. Okay. <laughs> I'm very keen on making Christmas gifts as well, and I'm also find myself in the same position Milan talks about, but I have to, I'm from Canada um, and I have to send stuff back to Canada usually by the start of December in order for it to get there by Christmas and I miss every year and then end up spending, spending a lot more money on shipping to get it there quickly because I try and make um, tree decorations every year. I'll show you some of, the, some of the decorations and actually I don't have my favorite one on me because I've given them all away but um, this is the one I made last year which was a penguin with a face mask. <laughs> And so just using like small scraps of fabric that I have, and this is in the color of my son's football team, which is IX, it's a Dutch team in red and white. Um, but yeah, as his name on the back, it's backwards, but August and, um, and it's stuffed with fabric scraps. So I just use a rotary cutter and this bits of scraps that are too small to use. I just like chop it up as much as I can until it becomes kind of like stuffing. And then I use that to stuff. And this is his one from the year before, which is just a little owl. 
this is actually a pattern. So Grain Line Studios, which is a sewing indie sewing pattern company, has, uh, and I'll put the link up after, some really great um, little sewing patterns. They're not zero waste sewing patterns, but you know, to, you can use waste to stuff them. Um, but there's an owl and a narwhal, and they have a gherkin, which is an interesting one. <laughs> a sparkly gherkin. <laughs> um, yeah, but yeah, the narwhal was my favorite one. I don't have I don't have any, I mean, maybe we can find a picture, but um, yeah, so I try and do, I, I try and make these for kind of nieces and nephews and um, friends, kids and things like that. And it's nice because I always get, they always send me pictures when the kids have put them up on the Christmas tree every year and kind of remember getting them. So it's just a really nice memory to create as well. Um, yeah, I'll pass it over if anyone else wants to share. Well, I have some similar things to share. So my sister collects bird ornaments. So I made her these little owls last year. They're so cute. <laughs> um, and then I made myself one too. Of course. So they're like full circle at the bottom. Um, and so what I do is I save all of my thread scraps and like- Oh my like, gosh, is that a mini wheelie wheel wheel pin? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, and like, I obviously don't sew that much cause this is like only about three quarters full from the whole year. And then I use this to stuff the owls. Okay. Um, sometimes I have to cut it up a little bit smaller, but, um, in, in the costuming world or like historical costuming world, we call the little scraps, um, cut from between garments cabbage. Hmm. Um, I believe that's a historical term for it. And then somebody said it on YouTube and now everybody is using it in the historical costume community. So then when you cut it really small, it's coleslaw. So, that's okay. <laughs> so um, I like to save the scraps for like the scraps that are too small to use and then chop them up for coleslaw in order to stuff things. And um, yesterday I was watching Bernadette Banner on YouTube and she has a vintage cauldron um, that she likes to put her coleslaw into. So she just like cuts up the scraps that she's done and like collects it to use to stuff whatever it is that she's making. But I'm like, man, I think I need a cauldron for my little That's scrap. So cool. I mean, the wheelie bin's pretty cool too, though. I want a little wheelie bin. Yeah. <laughs> right. Um, I've started like separating my scraps as well because like I cut a lot of samples because I teach sewing. I cut a lot of samples and I always use old like twalls and stuff from the um, Glasgow School of Art or like pick up old twalls and I cut the samples that I teach from from that. But then I'll always have like small scraps like that. And I've started separating the calico from the other fabric scraps so that I can maybe try dyeing like hand dyeing some of the calico into different colors and then using them in interesting ways because I've started. Um, I can show you after, but started kind of quilting some waste and I'll, sh I'll show you after, but yeah, um, I've been, yeah, very strategic about how I'm like organizing my waste now. And it was Brigitte Halmerson actually, who I was talking to, who talked about how, she, how she's also very strategic and how she um, separates her waste and cottons and linens and things like that um, for reuse, which is interesting. Um, yeah. Um, I have three more things. To oh, talk please show about. us. I just realized I have like two other things hanging around the house that I can <laughs> show up. Um, but with these eyes, I just wanted to talk about them. If you're making like little eyeballs for um, critters. So these are actually, um, they're like a round piece of sheeting fabric, just like regular white cotton and then taken in like with the running stitch around the edge but then this part here the black part is actually um like the the fluffy bits from the edge of that circle okay so they're they're kind of they're inside out and then i went over top of the salvage edges with um black thread over and over again, because 
I, I mean, I use the black thread to running stitch around the edges. I hope this is making sense. Um, and then just colored in any little extra spots with Sharpie. Yeah. So interesting um, that it, yeah, it was mainly because I was too lazy to go upstairs and try find beads. <laughs> to put on it. So, um, it works yeah. well. I mean, yeah, it looks good to me. It looks great. I, my grandmother would call those like yo-yos. I don't know if yeah. anyone else knows those term, but I know she's, she's, she's crazy about yo-yos. She's always making yo-yo quilts. <laughs> but yeah, they look like little yo-yos. Yeah. So I don't know if that might be useful for if you're making eyeballs on future fabric yeah. critters. Crazy. Um, yeah. I will disappear and find some other things. Okay, sounds good. I think Milen might be back with her blowfish. Did you find it, Milen? Yes. Yeah, I have found it, but the, actually now I I, I just um, realized it's it was it's still a prototype. I I just kept the prototype version, so it's not sewn entirely. But yeah, this is the ID. Um, so it's a fish, and then when you close it like the the mouse of the fish close it as well which is like i found it cute um, so clever and yeah, and yeah the the back is quite the same um yeah for the pyjama it's quite <laughs> nice for kids yeah um and and the is this is only strings that i made out of uh bias um so it was super easy um yeah and i also made um like an apron like a fox apron uh for my nephew um yeah so it was mostly kids wear <laughs> well kids accessories at least yeah i really enjoy sewing kids clothes and kids wear and stuff as well unfortunately my son is too picky now he doesn't wear the things <laughs> to make him anymore i've stopped making things for him apart from Christmas gifts, I guess, Christmas decorations, mm. but it is nice to make clothes for kids. It's a bit faster and smaller and takes less fabric and stuff as well. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Wendell, did you get a few of your, more of your projects? Yeah. Um, so this is just um, like last, two years ago, I made a bunch of Santa sacks um, and so this is the salvage from them. Mm -hmm. and this is other salvage. I matched it kind of by color. So then it's, I don't know, it's fabric rope. Yeah. Um, and I, I just enjoy sitting there and twisting it. Um, it's very relaxing. And I just overlap the edges when I'm gonna like, um, when it needs to change color, like, um, so it's literally just secured by the twisting. And is that um, a woven fabric? Yeah. Yeah, because I've seen that done, I've done it before in knit where you can just use, like you can twist scraps of knit together and you don't even have to stitch them or anything, but just separate scraps, just kind of twist them in a way where they hold together and kind of, you can make that twine. Yeah, you can see here, it's about an inch wide. Yeah um yeah so not sure what i'm going to do with the twine once it's done there's different options that i've seen online like i might use it to wrap presents or you can like twist it up like this and then a rug yeah do a rug or zigzag stitch it into like pot holders or um you can even like turn it into like baskets and stuff so there's lots of options, but mostly I just made it to, for keeping my hands busy. That's great. Yeah. Um, and I have it in different, like I have some linen salvage and other salvages to twist because I like to keep, again, the same fabrics together. Great. Yeah, that's and a really good idea for gift wrapping, actually. I hadn't thought of that before. But... Yeah. Um, and then... These, um, these are, okay, they're, 
necklaces that I made for a local art market that didn't go real well. They didn't sell any of them, so I don't know. Um, but um, it's all made from repurposed materials. So my mom is a bead artist, so we had like the findings and stuff hanging around at home. Um, but this part is linen scraps um, from a garment that I made, obviously. Um, and then they're put embroidered and then sewn over a square of plastic. In Canada, the cream cheese blocks come with this blue plastic on top of them. Um, and I was like, saving them because I'm like, I'm sure these are going to be useful someday. <laughs> and sure enough. Um, I was going to ask how you made it rigid because I could tell it's rigid, but yeah. So the, yeah. so is it like, um, is it light, little flowers embroidered on the front? Yeah, yeah, I did. I did some different ones. So like, uh, come on, <laughs> like grab one and they all come with it. This one's a starfish. Oh, nice. Um, mm -hmm. And one like a daisy. Oh, so, lovely. so it took a little while to figure out the best way to orient the fabric over the squares. So I don't know if you can see it, but it's actually, the grain line is running up and down like vertically and horizontally. So when it goes over the edge, it's on the bias. Um, and then it's just tucked and folded and sewn along the edges and then slip stitched in the center. Interesting. You could maybe even like, if you had slightly bigger it's a plastic, I don't know, think of something that it could come from, but like coasters or thing, you know, like wrap a bit of fabric around something like make coasters or um, pot holders or whatever as well. It's an interesting idea. Yeah. 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 These are cut, like the, the plastic itself is about that sort of size. Oh, right. So they are cut to size. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. Hopefully. Thanks for sharing. Yeah, so they might make better ornaments than necklaces, but. Embroidery is really lovely. I love that kind of, I find embroidery so therapeutic as well. It's so nice to just sit down and hand sew. Mm -hmm. Danielle, do you ever make Christmas gifts? Do I? Of course. You. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've started making a lot of um, Pin cushions using all of my thread as stuffing. Let me grab one really quick and show. <laughs> Danielle has just started a zero waste manufacturing facility in New York, which is where she is right now. It's very exciting. I'm just telling everyone where you are, Danielle. <laughs> yeah, so I do this little triangle foldy guy. It's basically just a rectangle, but instead of sewing the top and the bottom the same, you sew the bottom and then you uh, kind of shift the top halfway to adjust it to like make this little triangle um so we have a bunch of these i also have made them into christmas ornaments and stuff but it's just it's filled with all the thread scraps because there's literally nothing else you can do with them except for using the stuffing all of the fabric has, is accounted for but not the threads <laughs> i've just found a new or a new use for thread stuffing though you know i was showing you that well i haven't shown yet the quick little quilted um textile bits okay i'll show them now um, yeah do it so beautiful. But my friend Lydia, um, who's what Lydia made on Instagram, she recently um, posted like this huge quilted, big quilt basically that she's thinking of making a zero waste code out of, but it's quilted waste. So um, it's basically this idea. So you take, there's a backing fabric and then the waste is caught in under um, silk organza. So you can, it's really transparent and obviously a little bit slightly color coordinated waste. I'm just doing little French knots on this one um, and then putting a binding on it. I'm just kind of making samplers right now. Um, but I have a bunch of threads that I was gonna, I haven't done it yet, but was gonna try and put underneath um, 
underneath organza as well. So these are just, this one's actually coming apart. It was pinned all nicely, but that's one. These were actually scraps from little Christmas ornaments that were cut out at Bond Textiles. Um, and I stole them for scraps from her. Um, I was gonna make her a little Christmas gift as well. So, um, and then this is another one, but I'm actually the plan because I make a, a certain Christmas gift every, or Christmas ornament every year. And my plan is to make little bits of fabric this size and then um, cut a little make use top out of them and make tiny little zero waste make use tops for the tree with like, you know, my son's name embroidered on the top. Um, so yeah, little zero waste clothes for the tree this year is my plan. But um, yeah, I'd love to work. I'm going to play with like bigger quilted pieces, but I think I know Lydia had her quilt on, on her story. I'm not sure if she posted posted about it, but her, yeah, it's beautiful just seeing it as like a big piece. Um, it's all the kind of textile waste. She used to have a, a undergarments business. She made bras and pants and stuff. So it was all the waste that she saved from that. Um, but it's amazing how beautiful you can make waste look. And I think in this context, um, yeah. So I've been slowly working away at that. And I also just taught that in my zero waste wardrobe class last week, um, just thinking about ways of, yeah, using waste in interesting new ways, I guess. But um, is there anyone else that would, oh, Milan, yeah? Yeah, I just wanted to say that the Lydia's video is up on our community, community spotlight stories today. Oh, uh, because she, is, she has created a reel where she shows the whole process, the whole uh, quilting process. And so, yeah, we, we've just shared it on Instagram if you want to have a look at it. Perfect. Like, yeah, yeah. Good timing. <laughs> Would anybody else like to share? Marquetta. Did I pronounce your name right? Is it Marquetta? That's okay. Take your time. <laughs> okay, there. <laughs> Yes, it's Marquetta, or yeah, however, however sounds fine to you. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have a, like a few ideas that, I mean, I didn't come up with these all at once. And there are just uh, some ideas that we, we try to integrate um, in our like small production process. Um, we keep all our waste. Um, and you mentioned about, um, um, separating the different types of fabrics you use. So if you separate into all like your natural fabrics, um, cotton and linen, for example, you can take those to uh, paper making um, artisans. Oh. We have a few of those uh, in Montreal and, and they'll, I mean, they gladly take anything, any natural fabric they can and they make paper out of it. So if you have enough, you can basically have your own paper made from your fabric scraps, so that's so that's sort of a nice gift idea to uh, to consider if you you know if you make if you make quite a few scraps um, um, every year. Um, then I'll just mention like some of the obvious ones, but ones I'll be making for um, um, for I coach a volleyball team, so I'm going to be making some some gifts for my um, for the girls that play on the team, and um, so I mean the scrunchie is an obvious one that can yeah. um i also like to use uh, cotton and rubber elastic in it so that at the end you can also recycle like as a natural material yeah. but i'm going to yeah. be putting those on mason jars filled with hot chocolate mix so oh, clever just a small idea that that doesn't cost much and that can be made quite easily i don't usually have time to make <laughs> <laughs> gifts that much but um one clever idea my seamstress came up with um was so this is just a stuffed i mean it can basically take on any form but um does anyone want to guess what this is for apart from like a dog i feel like it's that's too obvious. Animals. <laughs> obvious. any guesses it took me it took me a few guesses to figure it out <laughs> What it is could it a be. dryer ball of some sort? No, but that could be a good idea to make dryer balls. Yeah. It has something to do with this. Oh, no. uh, it's for, it's so for, it's, for your, yes. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, so it's a, it's, it's um, a wrist support for your, I mean, for your Mouse. computer. <laughs> computer needs so if you're you know if you're not ergonomically uh, well positioned you you might you know have um have problems with your wrist so this can be a like nice little gift um and it can be made in whatever shape you want just as long as it it rests nicely on on the wrist so this is also stuffed with uh, fabric scraps um then you have like we mentioned pouches of all sorts that you can pretty much make um uh, with smaller pieces of fabric, but uh, we don't often know exactly what to stuff them in, what to put in there. Um, like small soaps can be nice, but I've placed um, soap shavings in this one. And so they're lavender soap uh, shavings. So they can be used to um, just smell nice in a drawer or, um, but they can also be used to wash clothes. So hand washing clothes with just a little bit of soap shaving. So these make little, little gifts. Um, then I couldn't find, I, I saw a really, really nice, um, interesting tutorial on a Martha Stewart's website um, about repurposing totes. Um, Cause we pretty much all have lots of tote bags, I'm sure. <laughs> And they, I'm not sure exactly how it's done. I'm gonna to try to find it, but they use a, like a regular tote and it's, it's sort of cut in a way that it, it, it becomes a pie, like holder transporter kind of thing. Okay, so, like it has kind of a base, like a larger base. Yes. Okay. Yeah, but it uses the same handle. So you don't have to sew up the handles again. It's just, you, you use a tote and you kind of transform it. So I'm going to try to find that because I find found that was kind of nice to reuse stuff. I did just um, need to transport a pumpkin pie to Thanksgiving party yes. uh, and <laughs> didn't have something to put in it. So that is an interesting idea. <laughs> yeah, because there are tutorials and, and patterns that you can make your own um, pie carrier, but that one reuses a tote. So I found that. Um, we've all like listed our, you know, little ornaments and stuff that can be made with, with scraps. Um, but as a gift, you can actually, uh, give maybe an ornament or even just a, um, it doesn't have to be Christmassy, but just a, a these are hearts obviously. Um, but you, if you give those with a little bottle of essential oil, you can place a little essential oil in there and hang that in your closet. So it doesn't always have to be stuffed with, um, lavender flowers, or it can just be fabric scraps, but you use oh. essential oil to perfume your, your space. Um, we uh, have a lot of, uh, we do uh, miter corners a lot. And so we have a lot of tri small triangle shaped uh, scraps. So these can be like reused to, oh, yeah. this is a headband. So, but it can also become like a belt. So you can use all the, so we, we save all the little triangles and um, we're gonna try to incorporate them into designs like necklines or, or waistbands or whatnot. And, and so these are just um, sewn together and there's like one rectangle and then and then I don't see if you can, you can see how they're sort of. So you can wear it both ways if you mm -hmm. want to have the color or not. So, so that's a one way that we found how to reuse the little triangles. And then another type of pouch that can easily be made um, that I also have a tutorial, found a tutorial for um, is just a small, there's no closures, nothing. It's just really simple. And the way that it's cut, you can easily make two. And so there's no, there are no scraps um, with those. Lovely. So, so yeah, that's, this is one my daughter made. A little starfish. <laughs> yeah. So.
Arcade, what is it that you do? Like, I can, so you're talking about seamstress and what, tell us what you yeah, do. Yeah, we, um, I have a small um, linen, I'm like linen design and, and production. So we do all things linen, just a little bit of clothes, a little bit of um, homeware and, and, and home linen. So Lovely. yeah, and I try to incorporate um, zero waste design into everything. Um, like I spoke with um, Milen uh, a few weeks ago and like making tea towels and, and, and towels and stuff like that is, is fairly easy. Just, I just sort of calculate the, the width of the fabric. But again, with making nice mitered corners, you always have that um, small triangle. Um, so, so those are things that we always keep. And then, you know, at the end of, of the year, on in, in periods where it's not as busy, we sort of brainstorm on ideas and how to incorporate those into other products and and stuff like that. And things I don't do, but I'm using right now because I I I, I hurt myself. Um, this is just a ice pack, but it's an ice pack cover. Right. So just makes it more can, comfortable than having like yeah a yeah. So if if you use ice packs in lunches, so an ice pack cover can also be a nice gift idea yeah great so that's pretty much all i have but if you um, want to pop your business in the chat as well feel free to do that yeah. and share it um thanks so much for sharing so many ideas yeah <laughs> again i didn't come up with those all at once <laughs> and did you say you're based in montreal um near montreal i'm more in a R rural area, um, but about half an hour east of Montreal, so I'm really close, but I never go there. <laughs> I'm from the other side of Canada, from British Columbia. I live in Glasgow now. I've been here for 10 years, but um, yeah, that's nice. <laughs> yeah, I, and I have, um, I see behind you, there's uh, like triangles on a, I don't know if that's, yeah. Yeah, I, I have a cushion exactly the same, like with the same triangles. Again, um, we make um, scarves that have triangle cutouts, like they, yeah. they end in, in a point. So all the triangles we also keep for, to make uh, like head scarves. Oh, nice, yeah. yeah. And so just again, like a little easy. rolled hem on the edges. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's kind of, I mean, it's easier to, to work with triangles, rectangles, and, and like geometric shapes that are, but yeah, so. I can show this quilt, actually. I, this isn't for Christmas, but it's one of these things that I've actually had on the go for like a couple of years, because when I was doing my master's, I was wanting to, I ended up creating a bunch of dresses from like quilted, um, quilted fabrics, patchwork fabrics. Um, but this was just made from, it's all kind of clothing from all secondhand clothing and stuff, but it's, I'm going to give it to a friend of mine. I'm going to embroider a poem that she likes across the whole thing to kind of quilt it together. Um, but it's been sitting there for quite a while. I haven't touched it, but yeah, it's a big quilt. So I guess, it, I mean, I love, it's a big project to do for someone, but I love making something like substantial every once in a while as a gift, which is lovely. Um, and it has so many stories in it as well. Like, there's bits of my son's shirts and um, my shirts and my grandmother's a shirt from my grandmother and um, it's nice to kind of pass on something that has those kind of stories as well. Um, but maybe I'll actually work on it over Christmas. <laughs> I love quilting. Does anyone else have anything they'd like to share? Yeah, I can share uh, something else. Like uh, it was last year um, during, we had a like kind of lockdown curfew period at the end of the year uh, in France. And um, we decided with my housemates that we would gift ourselves uh, like a homemade uh, cushion. Um, so uh, yeah, I can show you um, some pictures of it and of the process. Um, one second. You can see my screen, right? Yeah. 
So yeah, so uh, we started like uh, to collect all the scrap that we had uh, in the house. And then uh, we um, kind of analyzed the curves of the, of the scrap that we had. And we decided to design a cushion out of those curve line uh, to like to patchwork, uh, but based on those curves. And so we drafted, like we, we designed the lines on, on a paper to design the pattern. And then uh, we uh, cut the fabric and, um, and then we sew uh, together. It was really nice. Like I was the kind of the director of the operation and they were doing it. <laughs> um, it was a way to teach them how to sew and like, because they, wa they wanted me to teach them for uh, a while. And so then we kind of uh, designed this first side of the cushion. Um, and I, um, yeah, I, so we chose the three colors. And so we repeated the, the same pattern for uh, the two side. We added a zipper. And then um, at the end, we got this uh, like nice cushion on you know, to, to put in our living room. Um, and it was actually this, uh, the start of this uh, project was um, um, like, oh, sorry, I, I think I was not showing on the right screen. You didn't see me, um, sh um, you didn't, oh, I was not showing the right screen, sorry. That's okay, I mean, <laughs> we can see all the photos. Yeah, and so, um, it was inspired by a work of um, a designer who is a furnishing designer and she used a lot of scraps to make nice um, um, chair or like oh, this one is a real, but I was inspired by this kind of design. Um, and I think she was really good at finding the right colors with the right shape, still using curves. And so I wanted to make something similar for my home. Um, yeah, so that was it. And this is was the, this, I wanted to show the Fox um, apron I did uh, also as a gift last year for my nephew. <laughs> okay. So like the, the main fabric was not a scrap, but uh, all the white and black parts um, were, scraps yeah <laughs> it's so cute i absolutely love foxes and i have this fox hat which i made like knitted i just grabbed it because it was behind my computer when you were showing the fox but the quote this was i mean i guess it's zero waste it's knitted you know minimal waste at least there's a bit of threads you cut off in the end but the nice thing about this is i made this for my son he's 11 now and it's gone through two friends' children, and now I've just received it back. And now one of my good friends in Canada just had a baby, so I'm going to send it to her for Christmas. So I guess it's a Christmas gift um, that's been passed on for the last 11 years. And I, I'm, it's made from cotton. It's amazing. It's like for having children worn it, it's still quite clean as well. <laughs> but I love foxes. I also have a, a fox tattooed on my arm, which my son drew. <laughs> Which is quite cute. They're my favorite. And every once in a while, you see one in Glasgow running around the streets here. They're beautiful. <laughs> Does anyone else like to share? So I have a few more things which I can share. Um, and if anyone, you can raise your hand or just speak up if you want to share as well. Um, I made actually a couple of years ago because I made a zero waste collection um, for my masters, but um, not all of the patterns were zero waste. So I wanted to find other interesting ways of using waste. So I ended up making like just these little like artwork. You can see my light in it <laughs> um, from the leftover bit. So like each one is just the colors are the specific fabrics that were in. So like this one's from my coat. And then this one was from this like kind of kimono like top that I did, um, but they hang they hang in my bathroom, and I've got three of them. I've only got two of them that I've taken down. But yeah, so even just like you know, cutting up your scraps in interesting ways, and they're just um, I stuck them 
to, I used like a spray glue adhesive and just kind of stuck them down on a bit of cardboard and then just put the glass and then kind of flipped it and it worked, it worked quite well. Um, so yeah, little, little bits of artwork. And then I just bought these from a local shop. I've done lots of these in the past, but I've given them all away, but just little free motion embroider. So I didn't make these ones, but free motion embroidery on cards is great ways as well to use them. Um, use bits of scraps. So that's a cute. This is from Remode, Remode, which is a youth organization in, in Scotland. Um, but I love free motion embroidery. I like, it's quite fun to do it on, on card as well. Um, yeah, that's a cute little idea too. Um, I think that's everything I've got. Oh no, there's one more, hold on. Um, so about it starting gifts and not finishing. I eventually finished them, but I started this for Christmas two years ago for my grandmother. And it's it's my home in Canada. So it's Okanagan Lake. Um, but again, these were bits of scraps actually left for my master's project as well. Um, but I live in a really kind of mountainous valley. Um, and yeah, it's Okanagan Valley where I grew up. So I still need to finish this. I'm gonna kind of hand embroider it um, to finish it because it's all kind of raw edges still. but. I guess it's a bit of a collage of textiles. So lots of things to finish. <laughs> okay, anyone else like to share or have any questions? I mean, if you have any questions about gifts or techniques or things we can help with as well while we're here. So I just wanted to ask um, Milan, is the the apron that you made, was that zero waste cut out? Because um, I saw the pocket shapes looked like the the arm shapes from the fox. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, I designed it uh, in a way that it was like a full rect rectangle. So yeah, the curves of the arm all are the, the curve of the, of the pocket, yeah. Yeah, because the, uh, the main fabric, as I mentioned, was not scraps, out of scraps. So this part was zero waste. And then for the tiny details of uh, the nose and the eyes, it was scraps. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to send some images from my phone to my computer so I can show you um, what some of my students made. I can do it quickly enough. Um, oh, I'll maybe have to post, maybe, okay, let's see if we can, let's see if we can see them this way. Oh, uh, maybe it's a bit difficult. This is, so I was, the things I was showing you, the little quilted um, squares, those are obviously not quilted, but I taught that in my zero waste wardrobe class. And that was, I don't know if oh, it's quite hard to see, sorry with the, but that, those are those are actually um, from Mitred Corners as well. And she just, um, you know, put them between the uh, silk organza and then quilted like, um, use the quilting foot to do kind of triangles over top of the triangles. Um, that was an interesting one as well. Um, just bits of scraps and, Lots of different ideas around quilting. Sorry, I know it's not great on the phone. Um, I've been meaning to uh, get rid of the millions of photos I have on my phone for ages. It won't even let me upload them to the computer right now, but um, maybe I'll post them on Zero Waste or something, share them at some point. <laughs> well, we've got just about nine minutes left before we wrap up, but um yeah any other ideas or projects or questions Liz what is Christmas like for you in Australia uh just talking about that uh tonight because um there's there's still an obsession with snow here, even though it never happens. Like uh, we sing songs about dashing through it and we send cards with snowmen on and 
shops spray fake snow on the windows and stuff <laughs> like that. <laughs> but um, um, Australians dress up as reindeers and stuff, and uh, um, it doesn't really happen, you know. Um, so uh, so Christmas falls in in um, in summer, obviously, and uh, it's school holidays for six weeks, so it's a uh, uh, it's a big holiday for us. And uh, um, yeah, it's uh, it's not not always like super duper hot at, on Christmas Day, uh, but it is is warm, and uh, uh, a lot of Christmas things take place outside because the weather's fine. Um, uh, some people have Christmas at the beach. That's what my brother does. Beach. He's in Melbourne, actually, but he always goes to the beach on Christmas. <laughs> yeah, oh, we, we live inland, so uh, it's not an option. Um, uh, yeah, it's uh, very, um, well, it seems to be quite relaxed. I don't know, it's just, maybe it's the weather and everyone's on holidays, you know. Um, Have your kids seen snow before? Say that again? Have your children seen snow before? No, I've only seen it twice in my life before. It's really great stuff. I hope they can see it one day. No, today, actually, here, um, like big snowflakes. It doesn't, it never stays on the ground for very long, Vasco, but um, my son's home from, he's actually unwell. He, so he's home from school today, sitting on the couch, and we just put the Christmas tree up last and it was snowing, and it was just one of those fuzzy moments. I was sitting, having a cuddle with him. It is, it is wonderful snow. Um, being yeah, in Canada has been a lot, but <laughs> yeah. Have you ever been snowed in? Yes, yeah. I mean, not to the point where you. Well, yeah, I guess like we've always been able to get out of the house, but we've had to like have the shovel and shovel our way like out sometimes because um, you've got maybe. I think the most we've ever had is three and a half, maybe three and a half, four foot of snow or something like that. I'm from British, like, yeah, Valley in British Columbia, but you can get really high snow and build igloos and stuff by just digging into it. <laughs> but that was yeah. rare, like it didn't happen like that very often. Um, but there's a lot of snow in British Columbia right now as well. Um, there's something magical about it that. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah, something we, uh, we hear about, but uh, don't really, don't experience. Uh, it does actually snow in Australia, but not um, not here. Okay. And not because in, I've heard of snowboarding. Christmas. People do snowboard in Australia, snowboarding. which I thought was strange, yeah. but yeah. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in, in Tasmania, it snows. And uh, in uh, eastern states in the high country, it snows because um, there's snow fields that you can um, go to in winter. Okay. Interesting. Well, fun. Yeah. Fun pack. Mm. This is another completely unrelated to zero waste question, but I want to know if Victoria has Christmas beetles. Has Christmas. Or no, you're not in Victoria. You're in South Australia. Yes. Um, yeah. Are you Lindell Cave, by the way? Yeah, I am. Oh, hi. I didn't, uh, <laughs> I didn't connect the Lindells. Great to see you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So I, I'm curious if South Australia has the Christmas beetles. That, that come out around Christmas time. I grew up in Australia, but like New Christmas, South Wales. Uh, Christmas beetles? Yeah. Uh, no, we don't have them because, well, I've never heard of them. Okay. Uh, they must, must be an Eastern States thing. <laughs> yeah, they're, they're relatively large-ish beetles and they come in like these, they're these shiny rainbow gold and they come out at Christmas time. So they're really gorgeous. Um, I happen to be a fan of beetles. I mean, not, I know not everyone is, but it's like little, little nature's Christmas decorations. So. Oh, that's fun. Oh, nice. Oh, we don't get those here. No. Okay. Oh, cute. <laughs> Christmas beetles. I wasn't sure what you meant when you said beetles as well. I was like, oh, interesting. <laughs> Well, we've just got a few more minutes. Do we have one last kind of question or share before we wrap up? Sorry. Um, well, just to kind of wrap up then, if feel free to pop up or raise your hand or start chatting before I wrap up if you want to jump in, but, and I'll just maybe 
check really quickly that there's nothing in the actual chat. Um, I don't think so. Um, but we haven't got our next community call up yet, but we're, we've just been talking about what we're going to do. Um, if you have any ideas for community calls as well, like sort of things that you'd be interested in us covering or talking about as a community, like please either um, pop it in the chat here or send us a message on Instagram or an email. Um, we would love to hear your thoughts and what you'd like us to kind of chat about during these calls. Um, and if you're interested in hosting one as well, we're always looking for community members to kind of join, join in, join forces with us. And so if that's something you'd be interested interested in bringing a topic and hosting, let us know. Um, but we are kind of thinking about for our next community call is potentially just talking a bit about what our plans are for the next year and getting your feedback on that. So just like getting you a bit involved in the kind of planning we're doing and what we are hoping to achieve. And um, we've been doing some kind of strategic planning, which Milan has been um, kind of overseeing in our team meetings. Um, and we've got some really exciting stuff planned for uh, 2022 crazy um, yeah so that's kind of what we're thinking for the next community call in January which would be kind of a nice way to start the year just thinking ahead and and getting um, the community involved in um, just sharing ideas and and hearing your thoughts on what we're thinking so um, we'll post that on Instagram hopefully before we wrap up for the year um, if you're interested and in also yeah, we have another topic we wanted to bring at the beginning of the year is the creation of the directory. So we are currently working with uh, one of our volunteer, Clotilde. I don't know if she's there tonight, but um, yeah, she's been working hard on um, developing a collaborative directory where you will be able to set up your own profile uh, as a community member and um, and you'll if you have patterns you can also uh, tag and create a list of patterns so the idea is to create something collaborative so we're going to present this tool at the beginning of the year so yeah it would be helpful to have your feedback and um, yeah uh, helping us on this great thanks for sharing Milan. um well i think maybe um, we oh, said, oh. Just, yeah, go ahead. Uh, yeah, I just thought of something the other day that I thought um, uh, Zero Waste Design Online uh, could do, um, and that is the, the Zero Waste Fashion Design Wikipedia page. Um, uh, I feel like it sort of needs updating or regular updating because um, Zero Waste Design Online is not. I looked it up the other day, and it seems like it's like from five years ago or something. It's... Uh, um, uh, so I, I know there are some groups that um, take it as their thing to, to update a particular Wikipedia page annually just to, um, to keep the information in it fresh, but uh, that... Um, That's a great idea. Yeah. yeah would be something to do. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, maybe we'll have a look at that. We've got a team meeting on Thursday. We could maybe have a look and see what it says. <laughs> Right. Good idea. Thanks for sharing. Um, so great. Yeah. Thanks everyone for joining. I hope you have a very happy holiday from wherever you are in the world um, in December and um, we'll see you in 2022. So bye Claire. <laughs> so see you everyone. Talk to you later. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. bye. Thank you. Bye-bye.